God rays or light shafts or what we call in Unity Engine the volumetric lighting has been always an eye-catching visual effect that I really appreciate in every video game I see. And I always wanted to create that in one of my games. Today I got the chance to try the volumetric lighting in Unity Engine using the high definition rendering pipeline, the HDRP. And I'll show you step by step how to create this effect or to add it to an existing game that you're working on. This is Ramiz Ataba from Binary Lunar and let's get started. Let's create new 3D Unity project, not the HDRP, assuming that you're already working on a game or a project. Let's name it HDRP Volumetric Lights. Now let's go to Window Package Manager and search for the High Definition Rendering Pipeline, High Definition RP. Click Install and once the installation has finished, an HD Render Pipeline Wizard window will pop up. Just click Fix All to adjust the current project to adapt the HDRP. During this process, it will ask you to create a fresh HD render pipeline asset. Just cre click create one. And you might get the question again. So just click create one again till you see the green check marks on all the requirements for the HDRP. Now let's prepare our scene. We will start by creating a terrain. Right click anywhere in the hierarchy, 3D object, terrain. And to start, it's now black. So to start seeing it, we must increase the light intensity of the direct light to 10K. Currently the terrain is unnecessarily too big. So let's decrease its size to 500 by 500. I brought a grass texture to paint the terrain, so let's click on Paint Terrain, then select Paint Texture. Then click Edit Terrain Layers, Create Layer and select the grass texture. I provided the link for that texture down in the description. Now the terrain is boring and not beautiful at all, nor realistic, so let's add some ups and downs to the terrain to make it look like real terrain. So click on the raise or lower terrain, then select any brush you like. Left click to raise the terrain, shift and left click to lower the terrain and keep adjusting it to become somehow a bit realistic. I wanted to use the built-in tree game object in Unity to create the trees of this scene, but unfortunately the tree is not supported yet in HDRP because the developers of that tree, the speed tree, didn't add the support for HDRP yet. So to add some good trees to my scene, I borrowed some trees from the Book of the Dead official scene released by Unity. I exported that to this project. I'll provide the link to download Book of the Dead project down in the description, or you can download this project files if you are a patron. I imported the a tree from the Book of the Dead project, then let's click on Edit Trees, Add a Tree, then select the Pine tree which I imported, click Add. As you can see, you can increase the size of the brush. You can now paint the trees and add a randomization to them. So let's reduce the density to 10 maybe. That's good. And scatter some trees here and there. But also let's activate the randomness and not lock the width and height and increase the range of randomness. Now we will have a better random trees around the map we created. Let's scatter some and we're ready now to apply the volumetric lights. Before we start adding the volumetric lights and the fog, let's double check that the HDRP has the volumetric lighting enabled. So let's click edit project setting, then go to graphics, double click on the HDRP 
and go to the lighting section and check that the volumetrics enabled. You can also enable high quality if your PC can handle that. Back to the directional light, of course this can be applied to any other types of light like the spotlight. Let's set or make sure the volumetrics are enabled on this directional light and increase the resolution of the shadows to something like 2K to get a better rendered shadows. Of course, you can lower this if your PC can't handle this. Now let's reposition the camera down so we can see the light through the trees. So let's lower the height by lowering the, the Y value and position it somewhere between the trees and near the ground. Of course, make sure that it also faces the directional light. Now let's, let's create a new game object. Let's name it volumetric light and fog. Add a volume component to it, then override the visual environment. The visual environment and select none. That means nothing in the scene will affect the lights inside the scene. Of course, you can experiment by choosing gradient or the HDRI sky, which will affect the lights inside the scene and try to blend with them nicely. Now let's add an override for the fog of the scene. Click all to enable all the feature of the fog. Also click on the checkbox near the enable and the checkbox near the volumetric fog. And I'll go through one by one on each attributes or parameters and what each one does. The first one, the fog attenuation distance, how far we can see through the fog. So the lower the value, the less that we can see inside the fog. And I really like the less we see, it makes the game more mysterious or allow the volumetric lights to go through more distance through the fog. Let's adjust the angle of the directional light to be more lower to the surface of the ground by decreasing the rotation on the X to 15. And now we can see a nice looking volumetric lights. Then we can go to the directional light and enable the color temperature and increase the temperature to something like 1K800. That will give a charming looking like when you see the sunset. Yeah, it looks very nice and eye catchy. The second parameter is the base height represents from where you want the fog to start. Zero means it will start from zero Y. That means if your ground is on zero, then it will start from the ground. You can also change that to be a lower or higher value depends on your needs or the game needs or the scene you want to reach needs. The other value is the maximum height of the fog. So how far from the ground or from the base height the fog should cover. So if we set it to something like 25, as you can see, half of the camera filled with fog. The other half is free from fog. And that's it. While the final attribute, the max fog distance, how far from the camera the fog will be visible. So if we set this value to lower value, only the fog will be seen on a close distance to the camera, while the higher values, it will make the fog can be seen from far away. And of course you can change the tint or the albedo color of the fog to reach any color you desire that matches your needs. So if I change the albedo color to something bluish, multiplied with the warm color, we will reach something like yellowish. It's like the midday god rays. To see things how it looks like in the runtime, 
We can add to the camera free camera script, then click play and move using the keyboard buttons and the mouse. As you can see, we can we having now an eye catchy, very nice volumetric lights that make the game look cinematic. Feel free to adjust all the settings I showed you, change the color, change the color temperature, change the fog attenu attenuation distance, change the intensity of the light itself till you reach a satisfying result. Then to spice things up, you can add a new game object, name it post-processing and add a new volume to it, create new, then play with some overrides like the bloom, you can add bloom, also you can lens dirt, so you can enable the texture and intensity of lens dirt, but to get some nice textures for the lens dirt, you can download the additional post-processing data from the HDRP package manager. Also, you can add vignette override, so you can add a dark areas on the edges of the camera, which will give more concentration on the center of the screen. And finally, I use the cinema machine to create the cutscene that I showed you in the beginning of the video. If you are interested in learning how to create cutscenes using the cinema machine and the timeline, I can create a dedicated video for that. So let me know if you're interested in that in the comments. So that's it for today's video. You can make your scene look alive and realistic by adding the volumetric lights to your game. Join our Discord server and let us know what you think about this video and what you suggest for the next one. Thanks of course for watching and special thanks to our patrons who are supporting us on Patreon. Bovino, Sahar Bar, Dertek, All Jake Speaks, Dimitri Vasiliev, Bredman, Joshua Kratochvil, Parker Nelson, Giacomo Mariani, Falcon Jazz, Jazz Fever, Pedro Transong, Jens Valentine, Rick Jabowski, Jack Crystal, and Mohamed Aydin. If you enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and the notification bell so you don't miss the next video. Till next time, see you soon.